traditional stages in developing a system, designing. So we're now going to look at the third stage in the traditional approach to system development, which is that of designing. And I guess as you can see here visually, we're at the halfway point. So let's have a look into what designing is all about. Now, at the conclusion of the planning stage of system development, a single solution would have been selected by the project team to go ahead with as the new system. Okay, so from the planning stage, we did our feasibility study on a whole range of different ideas that could have been the new system. By the end of it, we had one actual system that came out best, okay, and that is what we're going ahead with now. So now we need to start designing what this system is going to look like. So in this design stage, the concept of the new system is introduced to the users and the participants in which its context is outlined. So the following areas need to be highlighted by the project team in order to outline this new information system. Essentially, the benefits of the new system needs to be clarified to the users. Okay, why would the users want a new system if there's no benefit to it? Okay, this is going to cost them a lot of money to develop this system. So there should be some benefits to it in order to justify its cost. Secondly, the information process of the new system to be highlighted, with the roles of participants within the new information system being clearly identified. This is because the participants had specific roles in the existing system, the old system, and how does that translate to the new system? And essentially, do these participants need to be retrained or need to learn any new type of software? Are any of their skills being made obsolete or do they have to obtain any new skills Okay, that are completely different to what they have? Okay, so that needs to be explained at this point. And then thirdly, information technology by the system also needs to be outlined. With hardware and software's relationship to the entry and processing of data and the outputting of information being specified. Okay, how much will this uh, hardware and software be compatible with what the actual organization already has? Will there be a complete overhaul of technology? Will this new technology be able to be used by the users and participants? Once again, will there need to be training to use this new technology? So these are all things that would get discussed at this point now because we've got what system we're going ahead with. Now, users and participants could say, no, 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 and they might have changed their mind and things like that. But obviously, the project team needs to justify why this is their best idea. And once again, refer back to the planning stage of with their feasibility studies and their requirements report and really justify why they're going ahead with this idea right now. So let's moving on now to the actual modeling of the information system, because this obviously helps get the message across of what this new system is going to look like. So at this point of the system is also modeled through a range of diagram, which aids in clarifying each of the relevant information processes in the system. Through the logical modeling of the system, it is easier for the project manager to better understand and document the development of this new system. Okay, through drawing this system in different ways and putting pen to paper and try to illustrate what the system looks like it helps develop it in the project manager's head and the project team's head okay and see if it makes logical sense and the whole range of diagrams for doing that which we'll get to in a moment but as we we're alluding to in the previous slide as well modeling the system through diagrams also helps the project manager illustrate its operation of the new system and clarify the advantage to the users and participants. Okay, if the project manager is up there explaining what the new system is going to look like, that could get confusing for the users and participants. But if they're able to show a range of different type of diagrams that illustrate how the system works, well, that might help them justify the system a bit easier because it hopefully makes logical sense to the users and participants. Okay, as well as ensuring that the information system is being created with ease of maintenance in place for the participants. You know, putting them at ease thinking, yes, they have created the best system system possible okay so this helps really visualize what the new system is going to look like not just to the project manager project team but also to the users and participants now we're going to have a look at a few ways of modeling the system now these aren't the only six in the course okay there are more diagrams in this course but these are the six we look at in the project management and developing information systems units okay and that is that of context diagrams data flow diagrams data dictionaries decision tables decisions trees and storyboards so let's have a look at what these six different types of diagrams are right now the first one is a context diagram which has the purpose of displaying all the expected inputs and outputs into the information system from various external entities okay as you can see from the diagram here we have one circle which represents the entire information system and there's only ever one circle in a context diagram okay but we can have a variety of external entities which may be different types of users who access the system essentially what data they put into the system and then what information are they going to get back out of the system these diagrams always have one circle but they can have multiple squares okay representing different types of users 
Now, this would be a starting point type of diagram for getting an idea of what data is going in and out of the system. And then it would evolve into what is next, which is a data flow diagram, okay, which are also used to model information systems that they go into greater detail than a context diagram as they display each process involved within the information system. So as you can see here, we have multiple circles now, each representing a different information process within this system. We also have data stores, which represent databases for where data is going to be stored as well. So here, the depth of what's being explained about the information system it's modeling is explained in much greater detail okay and they're much more complex diagrams because we are showing all the processes and all the flow lines of data which are displaying how data is being changed by the system right up to the point where it's displayed and presented back to the external entity Moving on then, we have probably something you're more familiar with, which is a storyboard. Okay, they're graphical tools used for illustrating systems that contain multiple interfaces, okay? The screens that users see, okay, and how they're connected. Okay, so this would be in the case of websites, and it could also be in the case of game design, where there are multiple screens in the program, and it shows basically what kinds of buttons are going to be on those screens. And when you click on those buttons, what interface do they lead to? They would also have a lot of description about color elements and design elements and what fonts are going to be used, uh, what other media is going to be used, such as um, YouTube videos and slideshows, where they're going to be embedded within their uh, site, as well as where your navigation bar is going to be. And you want to see consistency with those pages because all the different interfaces should marry well into that one overall program. and There should be a distinct feel to it. And that's what we're checking with the storyboard. Moving on next is to something that relates more to databases, and you go into this more with the Information Systems Databases Unit, and that's of data dictionaries, which are tools that assist in the establishing of metadata related to the fields that will be contained within a database. Now, fields are the categories of data that will be stored on a database. So an organization would need to think, what type of data do we need to have, for example, if it is a movie rental system, about the movies that they store on their system, such as movie name, movie title, okay, um, the genre that the movie is, what rating is it, for, and will that affect what users can access that movie based on its rating. So all this stuff needs to be established for a database, okay, and this goes into a lot more detail, as I said before, in information systems and databases. And then the final category, which actually has two um, diagrams linked to it, is that of decision trees and decision tables. And the purpose of these two diagrams is to display the variety of different outcomes that can come from the use of an information system okay so going through different pathways and entering in different types of data may lead to different results from the information system as you can see the decision uh, tree which is on my right uh, puts it out more as an actual diagram with the lines leading down different pathways whereas on the left side of the screen you can see the decision table okay and it is obviously in a more tabular format with ticks and crosses and based on the different rules being satisfied or not being satisfied we get different actions taking place at the bottom okay and so one of them is more better if you're better at reading tables and the other one is more better as a visual kind of pathway representation okay so obviously better for different purposes so I hope this video has given you a good introduction to the designing stage of system development and essentially the types of diagrams that are used to model the system so that the project team can get a better understanding of the system as well as assist in justifying their choice of their design to the actual users and participants who they are developing the system for.